Today we're going to be looking at a channel called Let's Game It Out. Specifically this video called I Produced So Much Nuclear Waste The World Is Now Ruined Forever in Satisfactory. And here we see it with those infamous yellow barrels with oozing green goo. Interesting, I wonder if he did it on purpose just to prove a point in a game. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fols. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. Episode, we realized one last thing left to do, nuclear power. Oh boy, I'm curious about this game's take on nuclear power. I wonder, so I've never actually played Satisfactory, but let's see if we can spot a bunch of uh, stereotypes. So what are we gonna do today? Play around with nuclear power, of course. We built this guy at the end of last episode. Is it on a waterfall? <laughs> Combination of nuclear and hydro. <laughs> and you put a cooling tower right there. And oh, I especially like that little ladder down there that's a ladder to nowhere. <laughs> that's hilarious. And our first step to nuclear victory is we need to go mine some uranium and shove it into this thing. La <laughs> Yes, must be a can-do reactor, because uh, those type of reactor designs actually run on natural uranium, so you don't have to enrich it or anything. <laughs> so we used our little locator guide here to find uranium, which was a little ways away. But the bigger hurdle is this stuff will kill you if you get too close to it, and that's why we brought this lovely thing, a hazmat suit. So, uranium, it is an alpha emitter, and alpha wouldn't, alpha sources won't, won't penetrate the skin, but so... Uranium isn't the hazardous part of nuclear that everyone thinks it to be, because I'm not saying you should have a chunk of uranium, keep it on your person 24-7, 365, and have it as like your little uranium buddy, uh, your pet uranium rock. Most, um, most transactional interaction while you're picking up and car carrying it, it's not going to harm you unless you were to lick it or eat it or something. It would be especially hazardous internally, um, the, uh, the alpha particles with uranium. What actually gives you dose are the fission products, things that are made after the uh, uranium fuel has been used, the, uh, fi the, the fission products, not uranium itself. But I'm sure we'll get to those in this video, too. On makes you look super cool. Now we're ready to go face the elements. You know now hazmat suits are mainly good for for preventing the spread of contamination. But as far as what they would do as as impacting dose, I mean it's an alpha source, so you'd have even less of it going through. So it it wouldn't be bad. But a lot of times you would you would wear those suits only in contaminated areas where you have like particulate matter that could get spread in areas you don't want to get spread. But if you're just going to be near an actual source, then no. We'll see what he does with this hazmat suit. Everything's green. I feel like that's sort of a good sign. <laughs> now, an another classic misconception about uranium. Here's what uranium actually looks like. I know, kind of boring. And here's what it looks like as a fuel assembly or placed in fuel rods and these little fuel pellets that are these little black ceramic pellets that make up the actual nuclear fuel. So, no green glowy stuff, I'm afraid. Going to the right place. Yep, we definitely are. I see little bits of ore here. Oh, hello, cat friend. <laughs> it's not sticking in green rocks. <laughs> Here's what uranium ore really looks like. Just looks like a rock. Though you can make green glowy glass from uranium. Seeing my reaction to that, I highly recommend you check out my reaction to one of Nile Red's videos where he made some glowy green uranium glass. I'll pin a comment down below. These are supposed to be spiders in the game, but for everybody's benefit, I turned on the arachnophobia mode, which turns them into these creepy cat heads, which I think we can all agree is a little worse than just spiders. <laughs> Imagine if that's what uranium did to spiders. <laughs> no. Because if this thing is pulling out uranium while we have it set up, we're just going to be taking on lots of radiation. Oh, did I mention to find this, I had to go through a waterfall? It's so getting dose while mining uranium, I, it would be elevated. Um, any sort of mining, you can get some elevated dose, though not really from the uranium itself, from radon gas. Uranium does eventually decay into radon, but I will say mining uranium is a little bit safer than mining coal, mainly because you don't have to do as much of it. 
And there's radon gas and that just exists in the crust, even though it does come from uranium and from thorium. It's mainly a hazard if you're around it for a longer period of time. And uranium is so fuel dense, millions of times more than coal. So you need you need a little you need millions of times more coal than you do uranium ore. So you don't have to spend as much time down there. Your dose rate might will probably be higher because of in being in close proximity to uranium that eventually decays over the course of billions of years into radon. Two things first, uranium cells and electromagnetic control rods. Uranium cells, so maybe uh, fuel, fuel assemblies? Interesting if he's going to enrich the uranium or not. Um, it's usually enriched to have more uranium-235 that is naturally, so the target for most nuclear power plants is 3 to 5% compared to its natural abundance, which is less than 1%. Though, like I mentioned earlier, can-do reactors can actually use natural uranium, but they also have to use heavy water. So you're either going to enrich uranium or you're going to enrich water, that it uses deuterium instead of hydrogen-1. Uranium cells are the uranium itself, as well as concrete, and the electromagnetic rods are stators and AI limiters. Electromagnetic control rods, okay. Normally control rods are made out of materials like boron or um, an alloy between like silver, indium, and cadmium materials that will absorb neutrons to instead of the uranium so they slow down the fission reaction and if they fully insert then they would actually shut down the uh, nuclear reactor. AI and control rods though, I can't... Can't say I've ever worked with anything like that. That's that's interesting. Easy enough. Let's make a couple assemblers. We'll just place one here and also just kind of over there. We're also going to send our uranium into this guy over here, which, by the way, we haven't connected the power to that thing yet. So let's do that now. OK, here we go. So now that we've connected the power, all we have to do is wait for the drill to do its thing and bring the uranium to us. Well, <laughs> just spitting out a bunch of green rocks. <laughs> The record, it took about four minutes, and it still hurts to get near, right? Oh boy, does it ever. It's kind of a shame it's- Those are amazingly fast conveyor belts. Don't have ever seen uranium on a conveyor belt. That's just funny to watch. Okay, and there's the concrete, as I slowly died radiation poisoning. Now that- <laughs> Unless, again, unless his character ate the stuff, you don't really have to really need to worry about radiation poisoning from uranium. I mean, he's away from the mines at this point, so he shouldn't be getting any dose from radon. He's doing the magic of making uranium cells. And for our control rods, gotta grab them stators and AI limiters. All right, AI limiters for days. And the Stator, that's a... I mainly think of it as the non-rotating part of a, of a turbine, as opposed to, like, you have your stator and then you have your rotor. But control rods do not rotate, so... <laughs> So, I don't know. <laughs> In this thing, we're going to build nuclear fuel rods. Okay, here we go. Here's the nuclear fuel rods. Ooh, they are not green, though. They are just, as I showed earlier, they are just metallic looking. They do turn blue, though. And that's in a, they do turn blue, and that's from the water, or specifically particles traveling faster than light and water. You can't go faster than light in a vacuum, but you can go faster than light and water, and that's, what happens? Think of that blue glow as the sonic boom, except for light. Which is what can finally go inside the nuclear reactors. My favorite part about this, very radioactive. That's what I- They are very radioactive if they're used, but if you're just making fresh fuel, they're actually not- they're not much radioactive at all because the uranium fuel is actually coated in a cladding. It's not going to do anything to you. I've put my hands on fresh fuel assemblies when they're brought into the plant. They're not radioactive. They don't have to be submerged in water during transport or any type of dry cast storage, anything like that. No, they're, uh, they're actually quite safe to handle. Spent fuel, though, the ones that ha that's a completely different story. There's a reason why you put them in water in spent fuel pools or you safely store them in dry cast storage. Fuel rods all over the map and wonder if I'm going to melt my face off. Oh, my <laughs> Needless to say, not a realistic depiction of fuel rods. But hey, if you're playing a video game where you're... Uh, objective is to make as much nuclear waste and radioactive material as possible, then sure, I can see why he's doing it. It's there. Ah, finally, after all that, the fuel rods are in the thingamajig. Machine looks to be working, and boy, is it a thing of beauty. 
So you have like a transparent viewport that you can look in the core that's built right next to what looks like a cooling tower on a waterfall. I'd tell you a few things about how this makes zero sense from a nuclear physics perspective, but how it's levitating above a waterfall like that probably tells you something about the realism. <laughs> Only thing left to do is hook it up to power. Oh, I thought that'd be more exciting. Ooh, but that smoke. <laughs> Just plugs a power line into the <laughs> the coolant tower, the cooling tower structure. Is my God, look at that jump. Our capacity for power was 4,400, and then we brought the power plant online, and now it's 6,900. That is quite the leap. So here's the other thing that happened. So what's interesting is it's showing it in terms of megawatt hours. So that's that's unusual. So megawatt hours, um, just like you see on your electric bill, it's in kilowatt hours. Megawatt hours are a thousand times bigger. It's a unit of energy, but in terms of power, just just megawatts. That's how the grid budgets in megawatts. That's how nuclear power is measured in megawatts. Don't know why they went, they went through the trouble of converting it into megawatt hours, because especially when you think of consumption and production and capacity, no, nah, it's that makes way less sense. <laughs> with nuclear power. We get delicious, beautiful waste. Oh, here we go. Yes, that, that infamous picture of waste. <laughs> Only time you ever see waste like that is through those cartoons that you see from, uh, from protesters. Nuclear waste doesn't actually look like that. Here's what the highest level of nuclear waste looks like. It's spent fuel assemblies, and it is safely stored in a dry cask. This is heavily shielded. It can withstand direct missile strikes. It is very tough, very safe. Here's what it looks like outside with people for scale. So, no, that's not what nuclear waste looks like as far as that infamous yellow and green barrel. Extremely radioactive. And what are we going to do with that nuclear waste? It is extremely radioactive. Um, that's where the majority of doses from. It's from the actual waste. It is more radioactive than the fuel. So I guess this game was right because I, I remember it said very radioactive versus extremely radioactive. Extremely sounds like it's more. So, OK, that's that's one thing they got right. But there is a major, major difference between that. And that's why it is safely stored in those casks. <laughs> Because it is. Build a bunch of conveyor belts that zigzags it through this waterfall, of course. And I'm using the slow conveyor belts because I want all that radiation goodness to get all in the water supply. <laughs> okay. Yes, he's deliberately, yeah, slow moving conveyor belts, getting it in water. That's, that's nasty. Depending on the fission product, some of it could actually be soluble in water, such as cesium-137. And, ugh, that, that's a mess. That's a big mess. Then once its slow journey is complete, all that tasty waste goes into this bin for future generations to worry about. <laughs> Why are you putting it in a bin, though? If you're trying to cause as much contamination as possible, just spread it everywhere. Because uh, the bin, that's kind of the same principle as dry cast storage, though that bin doesn't look nearly as secure. First nuclear power plant done. And while I'm satisfied we could get that first one off the ground, I feel like there's so much more we could be doing. Huh. I like what he said, getting it off the ground and that it's suspending above waterfall. That's pretty clever. To the top of this spiral. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, what's the plan? I mean, he so he he just made himself a giant spirally death thing of oil barrels. Gonna take a wild guess that he's probably gonna replace them all with nuclear waste. Look out there, you can already see our nuclear power plant dumping nuclear waste down below. So <laughs> Uh, putting that nuclear touch on the top of it. Yeah, okay, that's looking better. Got <laughs> put, there you go. Put your put your nuclear power plant there. I mean, there is something lovely about the image of a nuclear plant replacing a bunch of fossil fuels, but considering this is the purpose of this project is to create as much waste as possible, uh, I don't think this is this is what I had in mind when I talk about uh, nuclear power uh, replacing fossil fuels. <laughs> and fossil fuels actually produce a lot more waste by volume than nuclear. This'll do. B plus at best. There you go. Yep, saw it coming. He's just using fuel though. Use the waste. It's even more radioactive. That's what your goal is. <laughs>
So we're gonna take these fuel rods, and we're gonna feed them in through the bottom of the cocoon. That way the entire thing can maintain its visual splendor. Okay, there we go. Everything is properly irradiated. Now all we need to do is connect it to the power grid. Thankfully, because of the bounce pads floating in the air over here, there's already a bunch of power lines just ready for- <laughs> It's got floating power lines like it's ski lifts. This is basically what this is turning into, a nuclear fuel rod and waste chairlift connect to. God, look at that burst in power right there. Now we gotta deal with my favorite thing, nuclear waste. The waste is all gonna come out of right here, and as is my custom, we're only gonna use the finest, slowest belts we can. There now you go. We need to Maximize do is your just dose. run this belt full of byproduct goodness all the way down to the edge of these barrels. This is like, what if uh, nuclear power was run the literal opposite way of uh, <laughs> how it should be, while it, which is, of course, limiting dose, protecting people from waste, making producing power as efficient as possible. Just to make it a tad more convenient, I'm gonna send the nuclear waste down in one of these splitters using the power of conveyor lift technology. Thank God these things can just keep going lower and lower and lower. Look at that, you can just have it hand delivered right to the ground. You know what wow. I think I'm gonna do with all this nuclear stuff? I'm just gonna add a merger to where these iron rods are coming out, and I'm just gonna mix these in with the iron rods. Oh yeah, I'm sure this won't be a problem at all. <laughs> Uh, there you go. You want to contaminate, mix it with the other materials. Because when dealing with waste disposal of any kind, nuclear waste included, you, you get something contaminated, it also becomes nuclear waste or whatever ty other type of hazardous waste you're dealing with. Well, there it goes. Join your friends. You know, though, with two power plants, I still feel like we're not producing enough nuclear waste. <laughs> <laughs> ah, much better. There's like 50 power plants back there. But wow. <laughs> I would love to see more nuclear power plants being built this quickly. But this is the waste maximizing approach, so not not with this method at all, but hey. <laughs> uh actually poses a new problem. While our power capacity is amazing, our consumption is, uh, conservative at best, and in order for these things to start chewing through those fuel rods, we actually have to get our power consumption up, otherwise they're just gonna sit here idly. Which is great if you're trying to build an efficient factory. It's not so great if you want your main export to be nuclear waste. Pigeon's efficient, actually, you, you're kind of oversaturated in terms of production, so you would want to have find something that the something useful these power plants could do but he's probably going to make it a way that's going to be horrifically contaminated God, do we want more of these barrels? And to do that, we're gonna turn to our old friend, train technology. And the reason for that is because trains generate electricity and I can set them to go forever. <laughs> Mention train technology, I was thinking of train technologies as in the air conditioning manufacturer. <laughs> So test one. One station here, and another station here. Let's put a train down and do a quick test. As you can see, firing this thing up, it goes around and around and around, generating not nearly as much as I would like, but hey, it's generating something. Something else interesting we can do is we can connect trains together, and while each train in and of itself doesn't take up more power to fun- Make- make nuclear-powered trains, come on. A few people thought I was gonna be, when I mentioned I was gonna be a nuclear engineer, they thought I would be driving a nuclear-powered train. I can't say I've ever done that, but that should be a thing. Like this. They all have to fire up their engines to move. That's a nice little power push for not doing a whole lot. And I'll know this power output matters. If I see barrels piling up here, I know it's working. Now I'm interested to see if we can generate some power faster. Test number two. In which case we see if adding some rails that go up increases how much power it takes. And then also I gave it a little more distance, mostly because I don't know how to use train tracks. One interesting point is he brings up, you know, more fuel usage waste. Nuclear doesn't operate on a load-follow basis. It's more of a base load sort of thing. So the power is going somewhere. Like, increasing demand isn't going to raise reactor power without having to... D depending on the reactor type, you actually have to... Man you, have you raise reactor power first, or you raise uh, steam flow to the turbine, depending if it's a boiling water reactor or a pressurized water reactor. It's that sort of thing, but... It, it's not going to follow grid. It doesn't follow grid demand the way the way it's being. Dis it, it works in this game. It's a nuclear power is a base load thing. It doesn't necessarily follow the grid demand, which is one of the reasons why nuclear is given the biggest right of way when it comes to grid operations. It's essentially one gigantic loop that goes through all of these tracks. All the ways you go, so you make your nuclear plants burn all their fuel because because they produce too much power, right? <laughs> That's a lot of barrels. I think this is working out quite well. 
<laughs> well, there you have it. There's your goal of conveyor belts filled with disgusting nuclear waste. Normally the goal would be to try to figure out where to put this stuff so it doesn't do any harm. But why would you want to hide something so majestic? Now me, I look at my base and I see something that's missing. And I think this has a chance to be a real showpiece. Once again, I'll be back in a hot minute. Well, that's looking just swell. Oh yeah, feels good. This is looking great. So Conveyor belts of the stuff. That's... That's... Wow. Never seen fuel assemblies on any sort of conveyor belt. <laughs> or nuclear waste. Just no. I look at this and get the impression that I covered the entirety of my base in nuclear waste. And you'd be right. Up to and definitely including the weave. Which, if I do say so myself, has never looked better. <laughs> well, he accomplished his mission. <laughs> Don't ever want to see this in real life. Not that you could, because those barrels aren't a thing, but anyway. <laughs> Kind of like this is a waste disposal site, except above ground, and advertising its presence. Oh my god, the radiation is so bad. If I die and I have to respawn in, I just die instantly. I've made the base so hostile, I can't even be here anymore. And also, the spaghetti of my base is just completely out of control now. But damn, that nuclear waste looks so vibrant in the moonlight. <laughs> I feel like this is how this base was gonna end up. Nuclear waste everywhere, power plants as far as the eyes can see, our conveyor NATO that turned into a conveyor cocoon now has a war Head aiming up to the heavens and thank god i can use these bounce pads to just bask in it all while i <laughs> needless to say uh nuclear power plants cannot explode like a nuclear bomb there's just not enough enrichment not the right positioning of the fuel just not enough energy in that system to get it to do that thank my lucky stars the frame rate's gotten kind of bad again <laughs> that was extremely silly um needless to say nothing about that game even remotely realistic but it's it was really funny to watch. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.